Hey geeks, staff writer John Paul Gwynn here. Some of your recent disputes have taken us to such far-flung locales as Vegas' Luxor Hotel, a sheep's testicles, and worst of all, the discography of One Republic. Well, we're going to find out if it is actually too late to apologize on this edition of the Aerogenous Zone. Let's start in sunny Las Vegas. On January 2nd, we ran a question about the Luxor Casino that mentioned their elevators with a 39 degree incline. Because, you know, the Luxor is a pyramid and their elevators go all wooey. Cecil Smith from Tucson, Arizona wrote in to let us know that the Luxor doesn't actually call their elevators elevators. They call them inclinators. We did a little bit of digging into the Luxor's website and they sure enough call them inclinators and go on to let anybody reading it know that they are the only inclinators in Las Vegas, a place where exclusivity is more important than, say, water. The question then remains, were we wrong to call them elevators instead of inclinators? Technically, no. Inclinators are also known as inclined elevators or elevators. Structurally, they're basically the same except for being in an incline. The Luxor's inclinators slash elevators slash inclined elevators are made by the Otis Company, which you know is the company that makes a bunch of elevators. So the terminology was pretty apt, especially given that people don't usually refer to anything as inclinators. Shut it down. Blake from Buda, Texas wrote in about a question that he remembered as, quote, something about the goat without balls that leads the pack being the trendsetter. The actual question was, originally a castrated ram wearing a certain instrument to lead the flock, what 10-letter word now means a trendsetter, gonads, or no? The key word in the question was instrument, which is supposed to lead you to bell, which is supposed to lead you to bell weather. It's a tough question, but Blake's problem extends beyond that. He thinks that bell weather means classic, and he used Brooks Brothers as an example. You can read more about Brooks Brothers in Geeks Who Drink Presents Duh! 100 Bar Trivia Questions and How to Please a Troublesome Lover, available at fine booksellers. Now, back to bellwethers. Webster's says that a bellwether is one who takes the lead or initiative, also a leader of trends. Collins backs that up with a male sheep that leads the flock and also anything suggesting the general tendency or direction of events, style, etc. Moving on. Finally, we come to... One Republic. <laughs> Hannah and Jasmine from Alaska and Philip from Missouri wrote in about our round eight hits in a duffel bag, where we took eight chart toppers from Billboard's Hot 100 and placed them into their corresponding slots on the quiz. Number one was number one on the charts, number two was number two on the charts, etc. We included Apologize by Timbaland featuring One Republic. They point out that One Republic also released the song Sans Timbaland. They didn't even need him. That non-Timbaland version never hit Billboard's Hot 100. But a reasonable person in a noisy bar may not really be able to tell the difference with that 16 second clip or know which one hit the charts and which one didn't. And we realize that. And we will say that One Republic are wrong. It is not too late to apologize. We apologize. And Hannah, Jasmine, Philip, sash for you, sash for you, sash for you, sash is all around. And that does it for this edition of the Aerogenous Zone. If you think we're right, you think we're wrong, or you just want to gripe about something, keep them coming. Visit us at geeksydrink.com. And until our next edition, take care. Keep quizzing.